Hina, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Jazakallah khair for having me. You're a registered psychotherapist. You see men in your practice. Hina, what are the mental health challenges that men have? I think this is such an important topic for us to speak about because it's something that's not openly talked about, mm-hmm. especially in the Muslim community. And uh, I'm really glad that you brought this up. Um, we know that mental health for men is an undiscovered, uh, uncharted territory because mm. there's not enough research. We're not talking about it enough. There's this expectation almost, uh, this like toxic macho image that men don't, uh, can't talk about their feelings or they shouldn't have feelings. And that all of that gets us, uh, suppressed with what's actually happening. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, men have feelings and emotions and thoughts. And I'm really hoping that today we can really uncover and unpack some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Do mental health challenges look different for men than they do women? Like, for example, do they, do, they, do they show themselves in different ways in terms of certain behaviors that men might exhibit? Like, let's say anger or yeah. um, substance abuse or something like that. So yes and no. Okay. Um, mental health is a human concern. Mm-hmm. It's true that we've really undermined it for men. You know, mm-hmm. we really, it, because women generally talk about it more, it's discussed more, we're more in touch with our feelings. So it just seems like, very natural and very normal for us to be in uh, therapy or, you know, discussing mental health. But it's no different for men. This is a human concern mm. that we're talking about. So the display that you're going to see, changes in behavior, lack of sleep, you know, changes, disruption in sleep patterns, mm. changes in appetite, it, the display of symptomology is going to come very similar to what you would see in any person. Um, whereas with women, they'll be more in touch and in tune with it. They'll say, oh, I haven't slept properly in days or I notice that I'm aggravated or my mood has changed or I've lost my appetite. For a lot of men, you'd be surprised that these symptoms would be occurring, but they wouldn't notice it. Mm, that's interesting. So, so Hina, how do you deal with men in, in your practice? I don't deal with a lot of them. Okay. And that's the reason why it's important for us to talk about uh, men's mental health, especially for Muslim men. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Canadian, can, you, can you give me numbers in terms of how many, what, what the percentage of men are? I would say that in my practice, um, including couples, so people who are coming in for couples counseling, I'd be at about a 20-25% male ratio mm-hmm. versus female. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. It's very strikingly so, different. So Hina, what kind of concerns would men bring to you? Different stages of, the, of their lives, um, you're going to see different kinds of issues emerge. One of the things that's very um, common throughout their lifespan is uh, body image issues and self-esteem. It's surprising because you're thinking, mm-hmm. wait, that's a women's issue. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very much a male issue as well. Men are concerned about the way that they look, their appearance, especially now with the whole social media phenomena of this expected look like six packs and being mm-hmm. ripped and Instagram, gym yeah. bodies. Um, <laughs> boys at a very young age take on that pressure and they have these, you know, like, and as I said, like this, we, we skew it so much that we think that social media is toxic for women and their body image and their self-esteem. It's just as toxic for young men in our society as yeah. well. Because if you don't look like what you think you're supposed to look like, you're going to be hard on yourself. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, throughout the phases of their lives, looking for a marriage partner, it's really tough for men to really open up and understand and be able to even communicate what they're looking for and what they're hoping for. Early stages of their marriage, you know, we're always blaming men about you're not communicating or this guy, he doesn't know how to communicate or he doesn't understand emotions. They're these big labels Mm -hmm. that we're throwing in their direction that you can't do this and you don't communicate and you don't know how to be in touch with your feelings. Mm. That's toxic on our society's part. We've created a stigma, first of all, that men don't cry. Men shouldn't be emotional. Um, You know, men need to be strong and men need to be in charge and in control. And we've created this image in society of our expectations of men. And then later on, we're complaining that they're not communicating and they're not sharing and they're not talking. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of men, and I've, uh, you know, I mean, I'm coming purely from a perspective of what I'm hearing in therapy and what my experiences are when I do talks and, you know, uh, I do workshops and I hear from other men. We haven't left room for them to mm-hmm. talk about what their experiences are and what they're going through. You'll be surprised, Sophia, a very common thing that I hear from men uh, when I talk about having children and bringing home a baby and how that changes the relationship. We focus a lot on postpartum for women. We rarely talk about a man's experience in early fatherhood. Mm-hmm. And I was reading that they can experience it as well, postpartum depression. It can, yes, because you're living with a partner. All these changes have happened in your life. 
how does it not impact the mm-hmm. father, like a new dad? How does mm-hmm. it not impact a new dad? And nowadays, mashallah, you know, I've noticed a lot of young men stepping up, helping, hands on. Our, our lives don't look like the, what they looked like or our families, you know, what they were 150, 100 years ago or even 50 years ago. Now dads are more hands on. They are more involved and they don't want to be just the breadwinner. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not just looking to be, I'm going to work and come home and then watch TV. And, you know, that, that stereotypical image of what men used to be like, it's really evolved. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of hands on fathers who show up to their children's school events. You know, they sit with their kids at night. They're part of the dinner table conversation. They're real leaders in their homes yes. when it comes to attachment and building healthy family values. But when there's that image, there's a layer of thoughts and processes and feelings that go behind it. Men who are striving to be good husbands, attentive fathers, attentive husbands, they're trying to emotionally be there for their partner. So I want us you know, to be able to see that there is a side to that where men do feel fe- uh, fear. You know, they're scared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have And there's a lot of pressure being put on them. Incredible you know, in, in terms pressure. of, you know, just their identity, their masculinity, what does it mean, you know, as they have to navigate this kind of new world in which masculinity is being threatened, being challenged, and they have to figure out what it means to be a man. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And it's, it can be so overwhelming and so daunting and confusing because you're trying to play that balancing act. Mm-hmm. You're trying to be that macho man, you know, a manly man that, People will look up to him and be like, yeah, that I see that I see it. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to develop a softer side to themselves that caters to the emotional needs and the developmental needs of the family. It's a tightrope, not mm-hmm. easy to walk on at all. Mm-hmm. Do you think a, mind, a mindset shift is needed, both societally and for men, to help men to be able to manage their mental health better? At all levels. Okay. I think men need to be able to uh, be comfortable with exploring their emotional self to talk about their feelings, to think about their feelings. And as I said, you know, we've raised young men on this idea of boys don't cry. You know, boys are not, we're we're teaching them to suppress Mm -hmm. their emotions at a very young age. And at an older age, we're expecting something different. So just getting comfortable with yourself, you know, being able to admit to yourself that you're not going to be Superman. You're going to have challenges. You're going to go through uh, problems in life. There will be problems in life that you might not be able to solve by yourself. So having a, a trustworthy support system, whether it's your father or your brother or, you know, other brothers in the community, the imam at your masjid. It could even be, you know, your own wife or your partner, but just having a support system around you mm-hmm. that you can share your, your vulnerabilities with. You can share your things that are confusing you, things that are overwhelming you. Mm-hmm. Having a space where you feel safe talking about your own life experiences. Mm -hmm. And to the women, you know, I I definitely want to put this message out there. Your husband, your son, your brother, your father, the relationships in your life, the male relationships, they've got emotional needs as well. Mm -hmm. They they might not even be aware of them, (laughs) but just to check in, you know, what are you going through? What's going on? This must be really hard. Um, our, Our sons come home, you know, after a tough basketball game to be able to say, yeah, you know what? I'm really disappointed in myself. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's talk about that disappointment. Mm-hmm. Where, where does this go? Do you, do you beat yourself up all night about the fact that you didn't make that basket? Or do you talk about, you know what? I need to practice a little bit more. I need to get, get uh, familiar with my layup. I have a son, so I'm using a basketball mm-hmm. reference here. But really just trying to help my younger boys understand that you're going to face failure. Mm-hmm. You're going to face disappointment. You're going to face challenges. And when that stuff happens to you, you don't have to shove it in a box and pretend that you're okay to prove masculinity. You have to be comfortable with saying, yeah, that was tough. It would help if I talked about it. And it would be even better if I got help for it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Hina, how would you suggest that people get help? Would they go to the therapist or what is your advice? For anything, as I said, it's a mental health issue. And I don't want to just label it that it's a men's mental health issue. Mm-hmm. Anytime you notice a change within yourself, um, and I'm speaking to the men right now, (laughs) you notice a change in your personality, you're just not, you know, you're not being able to do the same things that you were before. Maybe your stress levels are high, so you're finding simple tasks even more challenging than you did before. When you're noticing change within yourself, it's kind of like a ripple system, right? You first go to your first level one support system people you love and you trust. And those relationships look different. As I mentioned earlier, you know, it could be your father, it could be a friend, it could be your spouse. But go to your first uh, support system and start sharing your experience and be comfortable with saying that, you know, I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. 
If your first support system is not being able to help, then you go to that second tier, maybe the imam of your masjid, somebody, a, a friend that you know is more experienced in the field. And, you know, getting comfortable with the idea of getting therapy early, getting intervention early. We still, you know, I mean, alhamdulillah, the stigma towards mental health is definitely changing, but men are still struggling coming in for mental health. You know, it's, it's still that, it's that silent problem that mm-hmm. they don't really want to come in and they don't want to seek help because they feel like it's almost a challenge to their masculinity. So just being able to admit that, you know what, maybe an outsider can step in, a professional can come in and help me through my challenges. Um, I definitely want to point something out here. So I've noticed something in my own experience as a therapist. Although the, my male clients are limited, I've noticed that they have far more success, quicker success in therapy than even my female clients. And you know, I'm not speaking on the entire population, but just mm-hmm. from my own personal experience, when men come into therapy, mashallah, they know that there's a problem and they want to fix it. Mm-hmm. And so they are like, here's my problem. I need a solution. <laughs> what do I do? And they're very keen on listening to suggestions and applying those changes. Mm -hmm. And I find that very refreshing because mashallah, you know, like the male clients all that I'll work with gets help faster, quicker, and they get there um, and they're happier and healthier. They're they're not, they don't feel like they're as stuck in their problems. So it's just an observation from my own experience that I wanted to share that I felt was, was really fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And I hope that, you know, eventually society will catch up too in terms of how it views men and, and, and so that that can allow them to access their mental health better. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Hina. Of course. Support us today and help us share the message of Islam with people across the globe. Thank you and may God bless you and your loved ones with the very best always. <laughs>